game at McLean Stadium. Speaking of Kansas State, we're now joined by K-State, former K-State uh, quarterback and star Michael Bishop. Also was at Blinn College in Brenham. He joins us on 365 Sports. Michael, it is great to have you on the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. 365 Sports, I'm doing great. Ready to, to, to see, a, see a good Wildcat victory if that may happen. Well, yeah, it's been a it's been a good year. Now, obviously, the loss last week was tough to deal with. They didn't have enough early, and eventually tried to come back. But what are your thoughts about who they are, the way they had to change quarterbacks because of Martinez's injury? Your thoughts about K State this year? Well, my thoughts about K State this year is that you know, we year in year out, you know, teams have new players, they have old players, they have players that have been around the program who who decide to finally make plays and show up. I think with K-State right now, you know, they have all the talent. They have all the key pieces that they need in order to be successful. They play some great games. They play some not-so-great games. It's just a matter of what team shows up. It's a matter of what attitude shows up. It's a matter of what, uh, you know, demeanor, you know, the way you carry yourself on the field, on the field issues. All that takes place uh, before you get a lot of on Saturday nights, or Saturday evenings, and Saturday mornings to play football. But I definitely think that, you know, with the core unit that they have, there's opportunities for them to be great. And there's an opportunity this this weekend to be great and continue to have great success. Chris Kleiman seems like the perfect kind of successor for the program, for Bill Snyder, uh, that uh, he, he really, really matches the attitude of the university. Do you feel that way? I, I definitely feel that, you know, with, with his history and what he's been, um, you know, he, he's been around some great players, he's been around a great coaching staff. Uh, but, you know, we all know as players that it, start, it starts at the top. You know, when you, when you have success that he's had uh, when he was at um, North Dakota and things of that nature, you know, he, he brought that in with well, winning history, winning tradition. So, you know, K-State, is all, in my opinion, has always been a team that, that's always been right at the bubble. And, you know, a play here, a play that keeps him from you know, having a, you know, a great season. Um, but I definitely think from me being around him and the times I've met him and hung out and talked with him, uh, to me, he, he's a great guy to play for. He's a great coach. He's a player. He's a player's coach. He gives you everything you need. And at the end of the day, it doesn't. To me, it, it, it matters. But the game is won between the lines. So you know, you can coach them up all week. But those young men, those young student athletes, they got to go out there with a mind frame that I am the best. I'm going to beat this man that's in front of me every single play. And when you don't have that clear mind frame, then you lose one or two. And then all of a sudden it's third and six, or you give up a first down. You know, if it's, it's fourth and forever, you, third and third and forever, you give up first down from lack of concentration. Uh, but I think that um, you know, he, he's right at this point since he's been there, he's been doing a great job. You know, they, they're winning games. Um, the fans are still showing up, so that, that's a major that's a major uh, spot for them right now. You know, the fans stop showing up, then then we we have a whole bunch of questions. But we're not at that point right now. We're still K State Wildcats. And we Week in, week out, we put our best eleven out there and we go to war. What was it like to have Willie Fritz and what we see him now doing at Tulane when you were at Blinn, and then, of course, the legend in the Hall of Famer and Bill Snyder as your two head coaches? Man, I'll tell you what, uh, Coach Fritz, uh, I get goosebumps when I, you know, when I talk about him because he was the Matt, he was a, yeah, he was the first, first guy who gave me an opportunity to play ball, have fun, to relax, win games, uh, not only with the two national championships, but he gave me an opportunity to go and play football to continue my dream. But then I go and, you know, be the, the legend, Coach Bill Snyder, another guy who gave me an opportunity to come in and earn and earn my position, earn, earn my way on the field. Uh, I, I knew I had talent, but I, but I wanted to be around great, coaches, great human beings, and I had an opportunity to be around two of the best that ever did it in college football. That's Coach Fritz and Coach Snyder. So, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things I was able to accomplish. Man, I, I got to give credit to those two guys for giving me an opportunity and give, giving me a space to go in and be myself and have fun. All right, Michael, you know, you were great at running the option and doing all the, the things in the offense, but – uh, I think, you know, obviously the thing that set you apart was you had an unbelievable cannon for a right arm. If you were standing at your peak on the goal line, no wind, normal, beautiful weather conditions, where's that ball going to land if you just chucked it? 93 yards in the air. 93 yards in the air, no wind. On the Absolutely. On I, the I, I had to prove a point when I was at K-State. So I, I, I threw it 93 yards. But I tell people all the time, I had an offensive lineman 
come up right behind me and throw an 85. So I wasn't impressed with my 92 yards. <laughs> yeah. Man, you did, Michael. You know, Paul's right. You had a gun, and you could fling it. And we're, I don't want to say were you ahead of your time because there were quarterbacks at that time that were dual-threat guys. But can you imagine you in the offenses with the RPOs that you see now? Oh, man, you know what? I, I talk to, to kids all the time, and I tell them all the time, man. If I had the opportunity to play in today's game, I would be out of this universe. I would be laughing, having fun, you know, smiling, high-fiving, uh, probably in the middle of, of plays, you know, in the huddle. You know, I, I would be so relaxed and joking in the huddle instead of, you know, being a serious guy that I was just because I know now that with everything that, that's available for the guys who can run and throw, I mean, if you can do it consistently, you can be unstoppable. And there's a lot of guys in the in the league now uh, both college and NFL, once they're on their game and, and, and the game is built around them, those guys are doing tremendous things. You see it week in, week out, you know, and it's, it's to the point now where you see it on Sundays in some, some organizations. Do you think that the it, – because it, it appears to me, if you look around the league, like there's Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, uh, Jalen Hurts, all guys who – Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray all have that dual threat mm-hmm. ability. Coaches, when you came out, kind of wanted every quarterback to be something. And if you could run, right. that was just a bonus. But you had to be something else, and the running didn't matter. Now, does it appear that coaches are like, we've got an athlete, let's build the offense around him, as opposed to trying to make him something that he's not? Well, at the college level, I say every 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 college coach that has an athlete like that, that plays quarterback, they love it, you know. Uh, at the NFL level, you know, we still we still have organizations where they want the 6'5", 6'8", you know, 235, 240 guy to drop back and throw it. And, and like I said, if he can run a little bit, that's a plus for him. But the game has changed. You know, the, the, the atmosphere has changed. The, the, the generations have changed. You know, these athletes are built different nowadays. You know, you don't have to be, uh, you know, Kyler Murray. You don't have to be 6'3", 6'4", to play QB anymore. You know, if you can run and throw, you can make great decisions, then you're giving your team an opportunity to win ball games. And I think at this time, in this day and age now, uh, I think that the future of the NFL, I think maybe 17, 18 of, of those teams are going to be looking for a playmaker because when it all breaks down and if you don't have that guy that can extend the play, then, you know, you got to bring, you got to have a, a great field goal kicker. You got to have a great punter. Uh, and I think everybody at that, that next level uh, punters and kickers, they, they understand that. So they're at some point, you know, you're going to get to a situation where we're like, hey, okay, it's a 30-yard field goal. Oh, but they're going for it because you have this guy that can run and throw. Um, so I, I definitely think the future is heading in that direction. And for the guys who, who are just straight drop back, they're going to have to, you know, find another, uh, find another energy for their game because at some time you're going to have to run and get that first down. It's going to be some tough yardage. You know, but a lot of people say that, you know, quarterbacks like that don't really last because they take hits, but we're built for this. You know, we take hits and we get up and we keep going. We're the leaders of the football team. Michael, there's a, a lot of comments in our chat room. People are thrilled to have you on. We have Kansas State fans who also, and other fans of the Big 12 and around the country, from Devil Frog. Mike set the mold for V.Y. Vince Young. Uh, Cam Newton, uh, Lamar <laughs> Jackson, uh, big mobile quarterbacks. In fact, I saw, was I... What, when was that when I saw you and Vince Young together on the field? Was it before a game? What was that? Yes, that was a uh, K State versus uh, uh, LSU bowl game, and so we, we we had opportunity to meet each other and and had a, had a little fun. Um, Vince got the, the the better receiver at the time, so it was a throwing competition. So uh, he he ended up beating me out, but it wasn't on my part. I had my receiver drop a couple passes, but you know it, it was it was fun. I got a chance to visit with him. You know, we, we talked. You know, I met his kids, and you know, we talked. We talked about football. We talked about you know both our careers. We talked about the, the things that we both went through. Um, you know, for, for me, you know, like I say, when you meet another guy that that can do what you've done your whole life and did at a high level, you know, it speaks volumes. And you know, I got a lot of respect for Vince. I got a lot of respect for his career. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about his career and the things that he went through. Mm-hmm. And you know, but at the end of the day, he had he had an opportunity. And a lot of us don't get an opportunity. So, you know, I told him, I look up to him for the simple fact that he had opportunity to go out there on Sundays and get a great opportunity to play. Uh, you know, and the other things that happened along in his career, you know, that that's, those are things that he had to deal with. But at the same time, 
I say, you know, a lot of people follow you. A lot of people love what you did when you had that opportunity. So, you know, you, you are not just, uh, you're best young. You are bench young, you know? Yeah. So he understood it. And, uh, you know, like I'm older than him. So, uh, coming from an older guy to a younger guy, we both did the, you know, both were able to do great things for our university that we played for. I think it was a great situation for both of us to come together and have a little friendly competition. All right, so you said opportunity. In 1998, you guys finally broke the bubble. You beat Nebraska. Uh, you had the perhaps the greatest turnaround of anybody, any program, anytime, anywhere with Bill Snyder, and heck, he did it twice at Kansas State. The 98 game with A&M, uh, is that some – how long did it take for you to get over that? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of, you know, seven kids. Uh, grew up, you know, both mom and dad in the house. So it was competition for us every day. I've learned that, you know, you're going to win something, you're going to lose something. But you want to you win more than you lose. You want to have, you know, your good days should outweigh your bad days. So for me, at that moment, you know, I, I was I was upset for that for that moment mm-hmm. because I knew that, you know, we, we we were blessed to be in that situation. You know, I, I definitely think that, you know, we got off the gas. We, we, gave, we gave them a break because the, the normal K-State team, we're trying to score 70 points. So I, I think at that point in time, we we, gave, we got off the gas and we didn't want to keep going. But, you know, hindsight 22, if we go back, we score 70 points against a the, the, the game is no contest. But when you let a team hang around, I mean, everybody knows that. When you let them hang around and you give them an inch, you give them an inch, all of a sudden it's a dog fight. Uh, you know, and it, actually we had a chance to win it at, uh, in a regulation. I, I don't know if a lot of people remember, but we threw a Hail Mary and I think the guy called it uh, – Eric Barnett caught it on the one yard line and was tackled on the one yard line. So we, we had we had plenty of chances to, to do it. But I still in the back of my mind and my heart I know that, you know, even being at twelve and one that year, um, first year of BCS, I think, you know, we didn't have an opportunity to play for the national title at twelve and one. And if we have if we were given that opportunity, there's no doubt in my mind, Tennessee, Florida State, whichever opponent we had, we would we would have took care of our business. But you know, you, you can't win them all. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, well uh, my my <laughs> My good days are way my bad days. So I'm, I'm proud of, of my guys, my teammates, my coaching staff for just, you know, putting us in a situation to be even be in, in, a, in a game like that. Michael, the, the, the people in the chat room love you, man. And, and one of the questions is your thoughts about the current Big 12. You know they've been through some upheaval, and now they survived again with Texas and Oklahoma yeah. eventually moving to the SEC, and the Big 12 added four new schools. What are your thoughts right. about – the conference now and they added four new in their future because it looks like it's just a matter of before it's not official yet but they've added a new tv deal and they seem to be healthy and it looked like they might die again well you know i think with every great um organization every great conference there's there's going to be some some ups and downs in it uh with the big 12 now i'm I'm part of the big 12 so i'm always fighting for the big 12 i always speak highly of the big 12 because i had opportunity to play for the big 12 but i definitely think that uh, with the addition of the teams or the, or the universities that have made their mind, I think it's a smart move to come in and join the Big 12. Uh, for me, the Big 12 is one of the toughest conference, and it's, to me it still is one of the toughest conference to this day. Um, I, I definitely think the future-wise is, is big. You know, you got, you, got, you got the deal that they just signed, and there's going to be plenty of other deals that come along. Uh, Big 12 is great football. You know, there's great, it's great student-athletes, there's great universities. There's no reason in the world for, you know, if, if I had students uh, – and I had to pick the university. I'm sending them to the Big 12 because I know you're going to get a great education, number one. You're going to have some great football. And you're going to have an opportunity to play in front of some of the greatest fans in America. That's what it's all about. In fact, I had someone ask me, if you don't mind, if you had, if you were coming out of Blinn and you had a chance to pick a team all over again, I would think, obviously, Kansas State would be involved. I'm not trying to say that you would change <laughs> your mind. Is there any doubt that's where you still want to go back to? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, um, coming out of high school, coming out of West Texas, coming out of Blinn, Blinn Junior College, um, you know, my heart was set for either UT or Texas A&M. Uh, but at that time, you know, they, both of the schools told me that they you know, wanted to use me receiver at DB. So with that being said, you know, I got an opportunity to play at K-State. I'm very thankful for K-State. But if I was coming out right now, man, I, I, I put on that Wildcat helmet and I go to war every single Saturday. You know, I wish – I, of course, I wish all the guys who heard that had a dollar that were great QBs and wound up being great QBs. But Well, that's what Robert Griffin had you, to hear. Yeah, with. Yeah. yeah. But I think about, like, if I think about the quarterbacks at those two schools at the time, and look, I know that you lost to Brandon Stewart in that Big 12 championship game, but 
He had Randy I, McCowan. And Randy McCowan and Brandon Stewart. Who's a runner. Yeah. 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 But yeah. and and uh Texas had James Brown. No, yeah. no, he was gone. Yes. Uh, yeah, he, uh, James Brown was, was uh he was at Texas my junior year at K State, okay. but yeah, he All was right. gone my senior year. Okay. Yeah. So and I know he had the big win against Nebraska, but I'm just right. saying Hindsight being yeah. 2020, no, it's, it's, that's a whiff that's from, what, from R.C. and Makovic right yeah. there. That's why might have cost hey, Makovic his I, job. Yeah, yeah. But but, but I, tell, I tell you what, I tell you what. When 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 I the, my junior year we played and we beat them in Manhattan, and then my senior year, of course, you know, Big Joe championship. But I will say this: I respect R.C. Slocum because he came and he apologized to me for not giving me an opportunity to play quarterback for Texas A&M. Yeah, I mean, now, uh, yeah, for uh, actually both of them. Um, Mac, uh, what's the name? The guy that was at uh, UT. John when we, when we beat, yeah, when we beat him at at K State, we beat him forty nine to seven. That was the game. Ricky had, I think, like twenty five yards, uh, thirty some yards on twenty five carries. Um, at that time, I, I got a face to face apology for not giving me an opportunity to stay in the state of Texas. Wow. So, so I'm, I'm I'm proud of that because they they gave me my flowers. Mm-hmm. You won national titles, titles plural. At Blinn yeah. under with Coach Fritz, you talked about what he meant to you. Uh, Cam Newton came along a little bit later. I was in Tyler, mm-hmm. and I went to Tyler Junior College, and I remember I covered junior college football back then, Navarro, Trinity Valley, and Kilgore. Um, and then you came to Blinn, and here they go. And then, of course, they've <laughs> continued to do pretty good. But uh, that how how good was that conference, Michael? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, for, for, for the people – in America, who <clears throat> never experienced a junior college, <clears throat> never had an opportunity to to actually sit down and see the things that we went through. Those were some tough times. I mean, you don't have the best of facilities, but you have the best of athletes. You have athletes who, who for some reason or another, didn't make it, didn't have the uh, the grades, or didn't have uh, you know certain things that that the universities required at that time. But when I tell you week in week out, if you didn't come to play, you you were going to be put on your on your butt. And that was, you know, yep. Trinity, Valley, Trinity Valley, Navarro, Tyler, uh, NEO, uh, you know, all those schools, man, every Saturday was tough. You know, we were able to win in that championship back back. But when I tell you it was tough uh, week in and week out, but I will say this, I was blessed. Like I said, I was blessed to be around some great coaches, you know, Willie Fritz, Jeff Conway. Um, those guys put together some of the best junior college players I've ever seen in my life to play on Saturdays. And we had guys who looked like, man, I tell you, they look like they can be all pros yep. at, at, at the NFL level at that time. And we were able to come together, understand what we were there for, follow Coach Fritz's rules. And Coach Fritz, uh, I, I tell people all the time, Tulane, Tulane is lucky because the Coach Fritz that I played for, he was a no-nonsense. No, I mean, you, if you showed up, if you showed up 30 seconds, 30 seconds late, you, you you had to regret it. So, you know, he kept us humble. He kept us accountable. He made sure we did the right thing on a day-to-day basis. And that made my junior college career what it was. It wasn't about the wins and losses. Um, it was about, can I depend on the next guy? If coach tells me, hey, I care about you, I really believe that he cared about me. You know, a lot of times you have situations where, you know, coaches say what they say to keep it going. But I, I can truly say, I've been around Coach Chris, and we talk, you know, to this day, I've been to a couple of Tulane games. Um, you know, I, I, I went and sat down and had phone conversations with him all the time. So I know he has never changed from the first day I met him. And he's a stand-up guy. Same thing with Coach Snyder. Uh, but that junior college level, man, it's a heck of a level. And you got to be hungry. you got to love football if you have to go to Juco route because it, it, it will bring the dog out of you. It will turn you from a young man to, to a strong man, and you will learn some good life lessons, but you'll have a chance to keep playing ball. Michael, I know you uh, have been coaching at the the School of so- Sports Sciences Legacy in spring. Yes. Uh, tell me about that experience and what it's like to give back now as you coaching someone else rather than being the one that's coached. You know, it's funny because <laughs> I'm, I'm always getting challenged by the kids. It's like, oh, coach, you can't run anymore. We've seen the highlight. You can't throw like that anymore. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden I, I throw a 70-yard pass in practice and then they just look at me you know but they, they, they bring out the best in me because number one I can still be around football I still get to learn I get to be a mentor to young men I get to see young men grow from from sixth grade until they graduate I get to see young men go to the next level go play college ball I get to see them live out their dreams because I was once that same little kid not knowing where my future was going to go but 
they have somebody in front of them that has won a Dave Brown Award, has won two national titles, has been a blue uh, all, uh, All-American, who has played in the CFL, the Arena Football League, and the National Football League, what better situation could you be in? And, and I'm truly blessed because I'm still here on this earth and I get a chance to show and express my experience from playing a simple game of football. But I get a chance every day to look into young men's eyes and say, hey, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. This is where I came from. Follow my steps, follow my page, follow my history, and you be the best you can be every single day. And you're going to have an opportunity to play at the next level, whether it's two coach, division one, two, three, NAI, or whatever it may be. I'm going to make sure that I give you everything that I have in my body, mind, and soul to make sure that you understand you got a chance to go play. Michael, my last question for you, and you've given us more time than I asked for. My God, it's been fantastic, and the, our audience has loved it. Every day on your Twitter feed, you have some sort of image <laughs> or graphic one yeah. day of, at a time, whatever day it is, 300, whatever it is right now. Um, yeah. is, is that something you had done before, or was that what something you started to do in 2022? You know, I started doing 2022, and, and today is uh, 312, and I'm going to make a post in a little bit. Uh, for today. But I, I started doing that for the simple fact that I was talking to one of my students and you know, he was saying, Coach, what makes you go every day? Because well, how do you how do you get yourself together to go coach football now? You're not playing anymore. You come out here, you're smiling and we're, we're not smiling and we're not doing exactly what you want us to do. We're not doing exactly what you want us to do. How do you keep going? And as of last year, coming, coming in January, I said to myself, if I can give the kids something every day to see and to take that and, and make it, put their own spin on it, then I'm going to do that. So, so far, 300, 311 days, they're going to make 312. I, I've been doing it. I haven't missed a day yet. So, I know that I, I am affecting somebody somewhere. And the crazy thing about it is, I've had people send me messages on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, people that I, that I never met in, in my life, and they telling me that, hey, coach, I love what you're doing. Keep it up. You inspired me today. So I know I'm doing my job. <laughs> you are. It's a great feed. Uh, we put it up on our graphic. Michael, I tell you what, I've really wanted to have you on the show now for a handful of years. I'm glad that uh, we were able to get together. Uh, fantastic segment. God bless you for what you're doing. Keep doing it, and thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. You guys have a great day. Michael Bishop, former Kansas State quarterback, two-time national champion, almost took Kansas State to the cusp and the, the overtime loss to A&M in 98 a Heisman Trophy runner-up. He's been around different professional leagues, now coaching at Legacy High School down in spring, and that's one happy young man. I really love that time with him. Hope you did as well. When we come back,